Hello, this is Tim Chen. I'm a postdoc at EPFL in the Geometric Computing Laboratory. With my co-authors, I would like to present bistable exotic surface structures. We present a mechanical system that's compliant and is fabricated in 2D. When deployed, the 3D shape attains structural rigidity and equilibrium. There are several challenges we face in the design of bistable structures. In this exotic structures, for example, pneumatic pressure is needed to keep the structure in 3D. Once the pressure is removed, the 3D shape collapses back into its 2D state. Uh, Raf Sanjani, in a recent paper, nicely shows the difference between conventional triangular exotic and bistable triangular exotic, which stays in the open state after the stretch is removed. We aim to use this in geometrical frustration to design our deployable structures. So let's look at the unicell. Each unicell consists of six tri identical triangular units. We can parameterize this using t and theta. And first, we quantify the bounds of t for a given theta. We know that outside of these bounds, the unicell is either physically invisible or not bistable. Now, if we assume that the width of the unicell is L, we can, by rotating the inner triangles, obtain the open shape. And once we have the open shape, we can define the stretch factor as 1 plus delta over L and plot this on the contour line. We note that the stretch factor ranges from one to two. Interestingly, for a given stretch factor, there are an infinite amount of t and theta pairs that can give us the stretch factor. Therefore, we come up with a mechanics-based selection criteria to choose the best unicell for a given stretch factor. We use mechanics to study the opening behavior of the unicell. Using FEM in conjunction with periodic boundary conditions, we're able to incrementally increase the stretch and obtain the corresponding string energy. This is the example of one of the opening sequences. In the string energy landscape, we clearly see that there are two local minima, and these correspond to the equilibrium states. If we differentiate this curve, we obtain the force versus string curve along with the critical points. So there are two criteria we, come, we can arrive at for choosing the best unicell. The first is to maximize by stability, the second is to maximize the stiffness at the second equilibrium state. This provides us the flexibility to choose the appropriate unicell depending on the specific application. Though in our experiments, we always selected the cell with the highest stiffness. Now that we understand the behavior on a unicell level, we seek to design our deployable structures. Note that if we simply tile identical unicells in a grid, we only obtain in-plane stretching behavior. And one other thing we notice is that the opening of our unicell is isotropic. So if we abstract this to the continuous world, we can capture this type of behavior using conformal deformation. And in this sense, in order to get non-zero Gaussian curvature, we need a variation in the expansion factor. More specifically, we need the Laplacian scale factor to be non-zero. And here we have the complete inverse design pipeline. Given the target surface, we compute its conformal map. First, we check that the expansion ratios are within the admissible bounds. If they are, we can overlay a regular grid of triangles and for each triangle seek a specific scale factor along this control map. And from that, we can select the unicell that has the highest stiffness from our pre-computed library. Once we have all the unicells, we can tile this into a 2D shape to be laser cut and deployed. And here's an example of a simple spherical cap designed with two different ranges of scale factors. Note that if I pop open one unicell, its neighbors open as well in a cascading fashion, making deployment very easy. And we can also change the topology of our target shape. In this case, we use a cylindrical topology and we're able to enforce that in the flat state, the two edge lines can be stitched together. And we can do this in the closed configuration and proceed to deploy this into the open configuration to arrive at very interesting artistic uh, artifacts. We have been only using the expansion side of the unicell, but equally we're able to reverse this and fabricate expanded unicell in the flat state and proceed to contractively deploy this into a non-porous 3D shape. Lastly, we developed a grasshopper script in order for users to experiment with their own target shapes. And you can check this out at the following link. So thank you so much for 
listening to the presentation and I will take any questions now.